What's up, everybody? We're at a day in Miami Studios, and I'm Yuli Monster Diaz here with and my son. And I'm Little Monster. That's right. And you're here listening to the Monsters. And uh, we're going to be talking about, you know, a little bit of Miami stuff, some gym stuff, some fight stuff, and, uh, and you know, give him some stats on fights. So, you know, we want to start off by telling everybody out there in Miami that, that you know, uh, I started my career here. I've been fighting here for, for a couple of years. And uh, it's amazing to be, you know, part of the Miami fight culture. So, you know, it's great to be sitting here and be able to bring you some news with my son that actually knows a lot more about stats and fighting than I do. So, what's up, champ? How are you feeling? Feeling great. Feeling, yeah. I mean, life is good, you know? Okay, good, 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 good. You know what? I wanted to start off by, uh, you know, last week or the last a couple of weeks ago, something that went viral. And you know him, you know, you know him pretty well, too, is NyQuil. Ooh. Yeah, a little guy night for shout out to night for <laughs> he was uh he punched one of the island boys in the stomach. The island boys deserve, deserve it honestly. Yeah. Like, you know they they just bums out looking for clown. <laughs> I feel like no, I'm not trying to hate on them. Like I have respect to everybody, but like those guys were, were like. They deserved it, you know. And Nikos, that's my boy, you know. Punching people, in, uh, the island boys, matter of fact, in the stomach, you know. So I have much respect for him and go follow Nikos. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, follow, follow Nikos Nichols on Instagram. But he punched him good. He folded him in half and yeah. made him drop and, yeah. and went viral. So. You know, and, and the island boys are like a little stick, you know, so. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I think they, they're about the same size as Nikos. Nikos only like 10 or 11 years old. Yeah. yeah. Talk about 10 or 11 years old. Your birthday's coming up. Let's go. How old are you going to be? 11, 11, 11, 11, okay. 11. You ready for that? I'm, I'm ready. Right, I'm ready. You know. Another, another, another lap around the, the, the year. Um, another day so, in Miami. Another <laughs> day in Miami. That's right. That's right. So getting to a little bit of fight news. You know, we're going to be all over the place here. Some fight news coming up. We got uh, uh, BYB number 25. It's going to be at the Florida State Fairgrounds in Tampa, Florida. Uh huh. And you have UFC 299. That's right. Where's 299. That Where's that going to be at? In Miami. That's right. We're hoping to be there, right? We're hoping to be there. I hope Sean O'Malley wins. We, I definitely hope a Cheeto doesn't make it a, a boring fire or anything like that. Is Sean O'Malley the main event? Yes, he's the main event going against Cheeto Vera. Mm -hmm. And Cheeto Vera is his only loss. So right. this is going to be a redemption for Sean O'Malley. <laughs> you know? I like that. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that. And, uh, and let me see, who else is fighting on that card, on the Miami card? Do you know? No, I don't really know because all I know, I heard that Sean O'Malley is fighting Cheeto Vera. Yeah, that's the main event. Yeah, we, gotta, so, we definitely got to look into that. Absolutely. And back to the BYB event in Tampa, we got uh, Cub Hawkins fighting Chad Kelly for the 185-pound belt. It's actually my weight class. That's actually my belt. I'll be coming to get it this year, fellas. Don't uh, run. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, so good luck to, to either one of you. And also, I want to give a shout-out to Gustavo Trujillo, the Cuban yeah. assassin. He's making his BYB debut mm -hmm. in Tampa on April 4th. So you guys tune in. Um, it's going to be a cold knockout. <laughs> yeah, so what do you think about boxing? You like boxing? I like boxing, but I, I think BYB... BKFC, UFC. I feel like all of those are more entertaining. They get hit harder. It's harder to get. It's easier to get knocked out. You know, it's more entertaining. And I have much respect for uh, boxers. If you step in that ring, you're a true one. And you're a real one. You're a real fighter. I respect you with all my heart. But I, I would like to see you step in BKFC or all or BYV or um, you yeah. know any of those stuff because it's different when you take off. It's gloves. way different. Yeah. <laughs> It's different when you take off those gloves. Mm -hmm. So, um, what do you think? What what age? This is a question we have out there. What age should our kids start boxing, and what gym should what do I recommend? So, uh, as for me, I've had Junior, you know, kind of uh, with the gloves on since he was five years old, uh, moving around. And I think you know that's a good age to start kids. Um, people have the wrong idea about boxing. You know, with kids, yeah. they they, they kind of think that if you put them in the gym, they're gonna start getting beat up and start having to box with little kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, it doesn't work like that. They gotta, they, they, they gotta learn what they're doing before they ever step in front of anybody. Yeah, I remember when me and my cousin, uh, <laughs> right. shout out to Caleb, <laughs> uh, me and him used to scrap, you know. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, and I feel like kids should start at a young age, at least like practicing moving your hands around because one day you're, it's gonna be very useful. And and 
if you're real boxing, like let's say like Nyquil, he's like number one in Florida, you know, like he fight, he fight, he fights people, and like he has the gloves on, and I have much respect for that because you know, people don't say anything about football and they get hit in the head as as hard as like not I'm not gonna say as hard as boxing, but like similarity, like people get con little kids get concussions and all those stuff, so. I I have respect for boxing at a young age. And you know about football too. Yeah, football yeah, too. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so talk to me. You got any questions for me? I heard you had something written down there for me. Oh yeah, go. yeah, yeah, yeah. Who? What are the top five training places in Miami? Ooh, I'm gonna get a lot of slack for this one. Top five training places in Miami. Number one, I gotta go with my gym, my home gym, Fifth Street Gym, Miami Beach, world famous Fifth Street Gym. You gotta and shout out Tiger. Absolutely, mm -hmm. Tiger, my coach Tiger, Dino Spencer. Um, that to me is number one. That's my gym, so I'm kind of biased on that. And um, you know, it was Muhammad Ali's old gym. They uh, obviously new location, new place. On uh, number two, number two. Hmm. Uh, I got to shout out to my boy Diego at KO Zone. I, I love his gym over there. He's been around for a while. Always shows me love. I've got a couple of good fighters coming out of there as well. Um, what about for not only like for boxing, you know, what about for losing weight kind of like if I if I wanted to lose weight, where would you want to go? Like, would you want to go to you fit or something? You oh, know, I don't know. That, yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah, not, yeah, that's not my style. I know, I'm a fighter. Yeah, like, I'm a fighter. I know you used to go to Stunners. Yeah, Stunners is my I, I know Stunners was really good. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Stunners, I, I, I scraped my whole leg one time there. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't yeah. notice how fast the treadmill was going, so. <laughs> yeah, Stunners is a good gym. Uh, would, you name, though, would you rank it as three or not really? No, 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 because uh, it's not a fighting gym. You know, it's yeah. more of a, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a boot camp type Yeah, gym. because, you, you, yeah. Number, right. number three, I would say uh, shout out to Go Shed. Go Shed is a great gym. Oh, yeah, Go Shed. They got a great following. They got uh, great fighters coming out of there. Shout out to the coach over there, Coach Awesome, who's uh, he's running uh, karate combat right now. So doing a big thing over there. He's got his killing fighters. It. <laughs> yeah, he's killing it. He's doing great. Um, number see. four. Number four. four. Number four, I got to go. I got to get Tropical Park Boxing. It's got the Muhammad Ali Gym. Uh, I gotta give them a shout out. There, they've been around. Uh, I think, I think Jesus Christ used to box there. That's how long it's been around. <laughs> Christopher Columbus had boxing classes there. <laughs> uh, it's a great gym, though. Uh, shout out to my boy David over there running the classes. He's big boy boxing. He's been around for a while. They got great fighters, and they got uh, Pedro Diaz Mundo boxing over there, which is he's world class. And number five. Hey, Missy, who can I give number five to? Don't get mad if he doesn't say your gym. <laughs> <laughs> if not, leave a, leave a comment. If not, fight him. <laughs> that is right. Number five, uh, man, I got to give Young Tigers Foundation with a Tigre. And Tigre, Young Tigers Foundation, has got a great gym, got great fighters on the there. The one that Baboon trained at? That's right. Baboon trains out of there. He had, uh, you know, a bare knuckle boxing champion, undisputed, undefeated champ. Up until recently, he fought, you know, Austin Trout. Hopefully, he gets that rematch. But, yeah, those are my top five. Those are my top five uh, fighting gyms in Miami. Can I ask you one more, uh, uh, two more questions? But I'm saying one more question for you. Don't get mad. Yeah, <laughs> nah, I just, I'm playing with you guys. <laughs> All right. What are the pros and cons of raising a kid in Miami? Oh, that's a good question. You just have to say three pros and three cons. Know, that's a smart question for a 10-year-old right there. <laughs> <laughs> um. Man, pros and cons of raising a kid in Miami. You know, Miami's a, a busy city. You know, busy city. There's a lot of things going on. So uh, you want to make sure, at least, you know, I like to make sure that I have my kid's attention uh, and that other things don't, don't grab his attention. Because um, I was a victim of that when I was growing up. You know, I grew up with a single mom. I didn't really have anybody looking over me. Other things grabbed my attention, things that, that, that weren't... Um, weren't the right things to do and I, I, I hung around the wrong people so it led me in the wrong direction so uh, I think one of the most important things is you know make sure you have time and you have conversations with your kid like me and you do you know we're having mm -hmm. this conversation here um, pros of living in Miami is uh, Miami's a beautiful place you know we got the beaches we got beautiful people we got beautiful places 
Uh, and there's a lot of culture in Miami, so I like to, you know, teach her the history of Miami, where I came from. So that's a, that's a pro right there. Right. And I, I completely agree because, you know, I can learn from my culture because all the Cubans come here, you know, so. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that's a ton of great places to eat. Mm. And uh, a ton of great places just to hang out and uh, have a good time and, you know, learn things about Miami. So Miami's got a lot of pros. But a lot of cons as well, you know. So, yeah. so yeah, you just gotta. I feel like there's more cons than more pros, in my opinion. You know. Yeah, I I think though, if you spend you know you spend a lot of time with your kid, you don't have to worry about the cons so much because as yeah. long as you got, you know, not so much that you gotta you know hover above them, but just have a good relationship with your, okay. with your with your kid. You know. All right. I have another question. You hear that third one? Good grades and bad behavior. Or good behavior and bad grades. Oh man, that's a tough one. Uh, I rather have good grades and bad behavior. <laughs> uh, actually, you know what? Change it up. <laughs> I think I don't have to change it up. Yeah, bad grades and good behavior, because the grades we can work on. You know, we'll study, we'll do what I, we'll, whatever we need to do to try to get your grades. I'll get you tutors and stuff. Because if you behave bad, you're not listening to me. Uh, kind of hard to get you to do what I want you to do or what I need you to do. Mm. But at the same time, you're getting good grades. I don't know, man. It's a, it's a yeah, tough yeah one. that's a tough one. That's <laughs> a, a tough one. A tough one. <laughs> I'm not a dad myself, but that's a tough one. Yeah, a yeah, one. yeah, 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 yeah. It is a tough one. I'm going to say this for inspiration. Thank God you get good grades <laughs> and you behave. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to say this for inspiration and I actually my question too. I two questions, but I want to say this one first. Okay. Going into a, a fight, What's the mentality? Like, what's going through your head? What are you thinking of? Who are you thinking of? Uh, what do you want to do? Uh, do you want to make it nice and easy? Do you want to make it fast and quick, knockout, vicious? Uh, do you want to rub it in his face? Do you want to do anything? Do you want to show respect? Like, Okay, those are 17 questions. Right? Yeah, I know, but... <laughs> um, my mentality going into a fight, you know, anytime I go into a fight, obviously I've been training for a, a few months, so... I have uh, a game plan, uh, but you know what? Sometimes the game plan goes out the door because my last fight, when I fought my BYB debut, I had a game plan going in, and at the hotel room the day of the fight, I kind of switched it up because I saw my demeanor, the demeanor of my opponent, and I, I felt like he was just moving slow, and uh, and I thought he was gonna you know start the fight slow, which wasn't the case. But I started the fight extra fast, and and you know it worked out to my benefit. Thank God that day I won, but. At least it was a twenty second knockout, you know. Yeah, yeah, but but yeah, but no, I like to uh, I like to stick to the game plan. Uh, I try to keep my head clear. Uh, you're a big motivation for me during the fights. You know, I I you know I I want to always come up on top to to make you proud. You know, and make Miami proud. You know, we always got Miami out Miami there. Miami stand know? up. That's right, that's right. So yeah, so my mentality during the, the the fights is you know I'm very focused. I'm very focused on fight day. Um, you know, once I get to the arena and and that's it. You know, f the fight's going down in a couple hours. I'm I'm, you know, it gets the focus gets more intense and and I get more ready as the the time gets closer. Okay, yeah. I have another question, okay. and everybody's gonna like this one because I I've been thinking this for past two years already, okay. but I don't know why I haven't asked you. Okay, I wanna hear it. Not after and and not a year later or anything. What was your reaction? When you had the three a second knockout at the moment, like the moment, the moment. At the moment, uh, did you even know it happened? Like man, so I knew it happened because I saw the guy get knocked out, <laughs> and then I jumped over the fence and was knocked myself out. And um, man, the moment it was so crazy because it, it, you know I had prepared so much for this. Yeah, it went down in three seconds, and I felt like I still wanted to fight. I wanted. I wish I had another opponent to fight that yeah. night. That's how. That's how I really felt, and my adrenaline was through the roof. Um, and I had so many emotions. I was happy. I was like nervous. I was like a million things at once. But it was a uh, it was an amazing feeling. When I went, look, I swear, I <laughs> saw the guy get knocked out. I still didn't know it happened though. <laughs> I just looked at one second. I swear, I looked one second, looked the other second behind me. The guy was. Ooh. I, know, I, I swear, know. I, I saw Z, I saw um, a bird going around his head. It was so fast that I I didn't even know I did it until yeah. until you know what? Like an hour later, I was still like, even days, weeks later, I still couldn't mm. believe it happened so fast. Mm -hmm. And that was a big moment of not only your life, my life, the whole family's life, you know, oh, because yeah. Crazy. It happens. 
Uh, you yeah. know what, man? I'm happy to be doing this with you. This, this is so cool. Mm -hmm. This has actually kind of been like a dream of mine to like sit in a podcast and have a dope conversation with you. And I'm, I'm glad we're doing it. You know, the topics... Topics are a little bit about everything, but it's mostly fights, you know, because we want to be talking about the fights and, and tell people who we, you know, what fights are coming up and who we like uh, in the fights. And, you know, it's cool to see you in these fight nights, like when we're at home and stuff, because you know so much more about the fighters than I do, really. Yeah. yeah. And um, so. Any questions for me? You know what? Any questions for you? How do you feel? Right? How do you feel on my fight night, right? When I'm when I'm walking up, when you're sitting in the crowd and I'm walking up to the ring and I'm about to get ready to fight. I'm, like, I'm peeing in my pants. Yeah? I'm peeing in my... Look, I'm not peeing in my pants because I think he's going to lose or something. I know this guy's going to get knocked out or it's going to be by decision, but it's usually knocked out. Knock out. Sorry. Um, I'm just, like, nervous, you know? Because, like, who wouldn't be nervous, you know? It's, like, my dad. He, he's right there. He, like, you see his mad face. And, you know, like, a tradition is him kissing me before the fight or at least at the end bringing me in the ring or something, you know. And um, it's just always a big moment if you lose or or win because that losing is losing is not losing. It's losing is learning, you know. No, nobody's a lunar loser. Nobody's a winner. Um, and there is winners. I, I Yes, there is winners, I mean. But... Winning is just one time. You have to win a lot of times, then you're a winner, you know? I, I and th That's my opinion, and people can have their own opinions, but you have to win and show me that you could be the greatest, you know? And I feel like you proved that to me. And the greatest lose, the greatest win, and I feel like Muhammad Ali, you guys say he's one of the best, right? He lost f four times, five times, I don't know. Mike Tyson, he lost like six times as well, you know? Losing is not losing; it's learning. Yeah, that's right. And and the thing about uh, like you know, uh, when you when you if you do lose a fight or you know if you do lose uh, or you feel like you lost something in life, um, to me the important thing is you know getting back up and and you know going going back for the next one. Because for example, if you, if you, let's say fighting, right? If you do lose a fight and then you never fight again. Um, I don't know. I don't agree with that. I feel like you, if you do lose, you should get up and you know keep coming back and and you know try to try to get that try to get that win back at least. You and know, just, and another thing I want to say is a loser is just a winner that tries. <laughs> yeah. I like that. That's yeah, awesome. you know. Where'd you get that quote from? I saw it. I just saw it. <laughs> and I, and I agree. You know, <laughs> like uh, uh, shout out to um social media. <laughs> you know, a loser is just a person who tries or a winner that tries. You know. That's right. That's right. Just keep um, trying for sure. And and losers are just learners, like I said. Mm -hmm. yeah. Consistency is key. Something that he always says. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Stay consistent. Um, hard hard work. You know, and and, and keep striving to to be the best. Um, well, thank you again for, for being my co-host. This is uh, episode one of The Monsters here, bringing you some fight news. You're going to see a lot more of us. We're, we're going to try to do this, what, at least once a week, right? Uh -huh. drop, drop some some fight knowledge once a week. Yeah, the next guys. one we're going to talk about UFC 299. That's right. You know, that's right. talk right. about Sean O'Malley and all those people. Yeah, Sean O'Malley is, is the main event. That's UFC 299 in Miami. We'll be back to talk about that soon and, and the rest of the card. And uh, yeah, guys, stay tuned. It's uh, Yuli the Monster. And Little Monster. That's and if right. you guys have any questions, just comment. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. Thank you, Dave Miami, for the studio. We appreciate y'all. Love.